Thank you for being here, Desiree. I appreciate you coming and spending your time and, and talking to us, to us some, about something that's really relevant in the cybersecurity world right now. And uh, can you just take a second and introduce yourself? Absolutely. So Desiree, I am a channel development manager at Datto. Um, I come from a security background. So I um, really fell in love and got a little geeky with all the fact that there is a lot of security problems happening out there and then there's a lot of um, ways to solve those problems. Um, so whether that be by having a backup and business continuity solution, which is a big part of what we're going to cover today, or being able to say not use the same passwords everywhere because it's surprising how many times people use the same passwords everywhere. Um, and then like all of that really stems from the fact that I have had um, – parents of really good friends who've lost life savings and even small amounts and large amounts like thousands and thousands of dollars because of not being cyber security aware and so it's something that I really believe in and I try either professionally and personally to push cyber security awareness um, for those reasons. Well and I, I really appreciate that because that is one of the biggest things is just uh, letting people know what risk there is out there right now. <laughs> you know the vulnerabilities can be scary but there's a lot of things we can do to mitigate the risk. And I think just knowing about it and helping people understand and know about it makes a big difference. Yeah, 100%, completely agree. So we just had a, a cybersecurity presentation breakfast this morning uh, and we went over a few things there and I was hoping to recap that a little bit and also ask some additional questions. Okay. Um, you know, for, for th I think the biggest thing right now is to, to understand the difference between backup and business continuity because a lot of people talk about backups but i feel like there's a whole other piece of the side of the equation that gets missed a lot yeah can you explain that difference absolutely absolutely um so of course backup is important if your computer if i walk into your office today and smash your computer you need to have a backup of that because you need to be able to be up and running the difference between backup and business continuity is how quickly you can be up and running so not just the importance like i guess is your step further of, of having your computer backed up but then if i came into your office and smashed your computer because i don't really like you or whatever reasons um or if there's a disaster whether it be ras ransomware or a flood or anything like that and you're your computer goes down, can you be back and running instantly? How long can you afford to be down? If you are a small to medium sized business who is running only lunches for an office building and then you're down for that lunch period, well, that's money in your pocket. That's important. So being able to, if you go down, but you can still run everything at lunch, you can still run your computers, you can still absolute focus, that's the difference between that. That's why that continuity piece to be always working if possible at any point in time. You know, I, what's the cost? Do you have any idea of, of, of the industry cost on, on ransomware and, and kind of what's impacting folks on not having that continuity component in place? Well, yeah, absolutely. So ransomware itself, you're looking at a $700 million cost to small to medium-sized businesses. And that number itself is just the cost of what is reported to the FBI for what people are actually paying on ransomware. But there's another number that's important to talk about. It's that it's a billion dollar number. Um, I don't have it on the top of my head, but um, the difference between, yes, the n amount of money that's being paid because people have to pay ransomware um, when they don't have a good solution in place, but it's when they pay, but how long it takes to get back up and running. How long is your business down? If you're, like, go back to that restaurant, if you're the restaurant and you end up being down for two weeks, that's two weeks of money that you're not, of time, that you're not making money. Um, and then you're paying staff and you're still paying for food, you're still paying for all those things. Or if you're a small community size business that say is a dental practice um, and you get hacked and you lose or you get ransomware and you lose that information not only now do you either a if you don't have a business continuity in place not only do you have to pay that ransom if you want that information back which means you're paying a lot of money but it's going to take a long time to get things back up and running it's not a flip of the switch um, then you still have to go through sec full security checks to go find where this package is sitting on your computer because they could have stolen a lot of information as well, especially dental health. Like the amount of money that information is worth on the dark web is it's a big business for sure. So I know locally, you know, one of the big things that I hear a lot is, uh, you know, you, you see the big news articles, but um, I think what people don't realize is here in Tri-Cities, it's happening all the time. And, and people just don't hear about it. Just last week, I heard about a 
uh, a big trucking company that got hit with ransomware, and it's one of the biggest in the Northwest, and they they were down for over a week. Mm -hmm. And I and I just think, wow, how many millions of dollars did that impact them? That 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 not only them, but th th there's got to be a cascade effect too, because trucking company they they have issues ship, shipping product, uh, they can't get to their destination, so. I mean, I know I read uh, not too long ago that there was an estimate uh, estimated um, for 2019 it was going to be around 2.1 mil uh, no 2.1 trillion dollars in economic impact mm -hmm. because of of ransomware. Yep, it and that stems from like exactly what you said that cascading effect. But you look at even so the big cities where they get um, Atlanta still hasn't gotten all their police cam data back. They probably never will. And that was a couple of years ago. Or there was an example that just came up, uh, fell across my lap today. Um, There's a, a small flower family owned flower business in Ohio that um, been around for 60 years. Mom, grandma, great grandma, like they ran that all the way down to the kids running the business. So it's completely attached to who they are. Um, and unfortunately, they weren't prepared. They got hit with ransomware. They didn't have security in place. They didn't have the money to pay the ransom and they shut down just like that. That in changes, not just the business, but the entire community and the entire family. What are they going to do now? Yeah, so it's not just some, because sometimes I feel like it's kind of this big, <clears throat> like either it's not going to happen to me or it's this big ambiguous, oh, it's out there, it's a threat. But when you look at the small business and how big of a personal impact that can have, mm -hmm. not only, like you said, to the business, but the people that work there, the families that it supports, I mean, that's a significant impact. They say that, um, this is a long time ago, someone told me this, and it's just always stuck in my head, that business owners, whether it be um, a managed service provider, the owner of the company, or these small to medium-sized businesses, when it comes down to it, it's all the same industry. You guys are the only ones who will work um, 80 hours a week for yourself, so you don't have to work 40 hours a week for someone else. What is the value of that to you? What happens if literally one click of an email, and not just by you, by anybody else, and totally by accident, that's the thing, a lot of the times people think, well, I've trained everybody. Think about how many times you've done something just by accident. You're, everyone's so freaking busy that you click one button and you're willing to lose all of that. It's the risk, it, it break, literally breaks my heart when you think about these companies that entirely lose their entire businesses. Um, this is an older story in up in Canada, but I think it was 2016, there was a, um, a rescue. So a small rescue, one woman rescues dogs and just gets money from the public. She got hit from ransomware and I think it was only something stupid like $800, like not even that much. But she is an older retired woman who runs a rescue. She doesn't have a lot of cash. She gets hits with ransomware. Luckily, someone donated money to pay it for it. So she was able to get her information back. But that's the point is a lot of times people are like, well, I'm too small. It's not going to happen to me. They don't realize that this is such big business that it's about, it's not about who you are. It's about how they can make money. And if they think they can make money from you, they're going to try because it's business. So it's a, a lot of it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. You know, they infect as many people as they can, get the best dollar they can for the person that they've infected and, uh, and then just as move on. If you can think about a way to make money, somebody is trying it. So definitely a huge numbers game. And then we're seeing a lot of um, stuff come out via social engineering or by like the social engineering is more targeted because they're finding out who that you are, what they can get from you. So say with healthcare being such a big industry, mm -hmm. that's more targeted, but exactly. It's a numbers game. Let's make money. Uh, is the threat of ransomware increasing or decreasing and kind of a second part of that would be uh, is there more being done sadly so I've got good news is conversations like this are really really important and they're happening more and more it doesn't matter what event I go to this is this is literally my job to go out and have these conversations with people so that is the good part is people are more and more educated the bad news is it's going to get worse it's not going anywhere there's no point in time it's going to go anywhere um, and that's just based on the fact that there's money to be made and as long as there's money to be made people are going to try to make it i was just remembering a uh, recent article i read uh, about a, a medical clinic in california even that 
uh, got ransomware within the last couple months, and they're even closing their doors, the whole medical clinic, because they can't recover the data. And and the, even if they wanted to pay the ransomware, I don't know that they could because they, uh, the, however, in the process, they, they lost their data. And in California, they've got big fines attached to losing data. So it's not even just that's they can be huge fines attached to that as well. Well, I get concerned, too, because if, if they find, are found negligent in any way, I mean, there's potential, you know, not only the fines, but the financial impact. But I, I mean, criminal potential mm-hmm. civil lawsuits. Absolutely. You know, and so, the, I mean, the threat is, is, is big and it's scary. And and uh, so what, I, you know, what I guess another question that I get asked all the time is why don't the authorities do anything about it? There's a few different answers to that, I would think. So one is they really can't when it comes down to it. Um, so cryptocurrency, a.k.a. Bitcoin and ransomware slash the dark web are entirely in, tied together. Um I would argue to say that without ransomware, um, aka WannaCry specifically, the value of Bitcoin skyrocketed as soon as that happened. And that's because it gave the bad guys a way to get paid without getting caught. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to a bank and robbing a bank and there being video cameras everywhere and having this big elaborate scheme, now all you have to do is log into the dark web and purchase or find something that's already there. And a lot of the times you don't even have to pay for something. You can gather a team in the dark web that will help you do something bad because they'll just split the funds with you later. Um, And so it's kind of a matter of they can't because they can't track this. But then there are times that they do find the bad guys. But it's not like we're in one city in the US and it's the guy across the street and we're going to go in and get him. This is worldwide crime. Um, There's really cool videos that you can find for targeting attacks for see which which cities and um, states and countries around the world are being targeted at which times. Um, So it's not and, and most of these ransomwares are actually translated into every single language possible because it's worldwide. So with so many attacks coming so many different locations, even if you catch one guy from one place, there's another billions of people in the world where attacks can be coming from. And then on top of that, you've got state-sponsored crime, which is another thing, or state-sponsored even information gathering. A lot of, um, sadly, a lot of states will pay just for information that can be taken. So not even necessarily about um, encrypting data, but taking that data and stealing it and then selling it back um, would just be some reasons why, unfortunately, they are trying, but we have to be smart. They ha- they're they just as smart as us. So what, what what can the normal guy do? I mean, what what's like a business owner or even an individual? What are the things that they, what, you know, it's almost like too big to even do anything about? Yeah, um, definitely like deer in headlights. <laughs> Uh, I can definitely see where that can be a cause and not even knowing where to start. Um, There's one big thing. There's a few big things that I just talk about kind of. um, One, you always should be, if you're using a password, right now if you're listening to this and you have a password that is password123 or password your last name, your first name or anything, change it. Really, you should just change all your passwords. If you have a password on more than one thing, you should change them all. Never have the same password on more than one location. Um, that's one. 2FA. 2FA is a big thing we're seeing in the industry. What's, two, what's, what's 2FA? So a multi-factor authentication. I can never say that word, so I apologize. So whenever you're logging into something, say your email, you should have a secondary method, say it tied to your phone, whether there's several companies that do this, you should talk to a professional to help you with this. But um, when you log into your email and you enter your password on whatever you set it up as, so whether it be an email, text message, um, phone call, and then there's um, a couple companies that do push notifications to your cell phone that will pop up and say, hey, is this actually you? So that way, if someone is trying to log in as fake you, you still get that secondary method of pushing saying, hey, oh, is this actually you? And if it's not, you can decline, which then notifies you that someone's actually trying to get into your accounts. Okay. So it's similar like when I reset my Google password, if I forget it or something, or it sends me a code or something exactly. like that to, to enter in, in addition to whatever password. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then of course, Coming from Datto, we have to talk about the having a business continuity solution. So not just backing up in your in your information, but having a business continuity that you, if something does happen, because unfortunately it's not a matter of um, 
don't worry, I've trained everyone, everything's safe, it's gonna be fine. It's a matter of protecting yourself in case something happens. Um, and then all of this, like your anti-malware, your antivirus, all of this is super, um, can just feel like a lot. And that's why talking to a professional, so whether that be an IT service provider or a managed service provider is so important. Um, every small to medium sized business, generally speaking, and hopefully, is really busy. People don't have the time to be searching around trying to figure out a product. So we had a question earlier today where one of the guys was saying, um, how do I vet different solutions when it comes to um, a product? Um, and really the fact of the matter is, is that's what your IT service writer, your managed service writer is there for you. That's what you guys do. I, I go to these events and I see you all. This is what I do. I go to events and I see people. I see all of you guys attending all these events and it, say DattoCon specifically, we have nine, we had 90 vendors attending. So that's 90 people that over a span of a few days, you guys get to talk to, come home. A, we're not bringing vendors that are risky to the event. B, you're in the event, you get to choose between which ones you like, do the research, spend the time, and that way when you have one of your clients coming up to you saying, who should I use, you already have a portfolio of products that you believe in. Yeah, and I think that's an important, uh, and very important point because we, we spend a lot of time, and I know personally technologize, we spend a, a lot of time, whether it's R&D, due diligence with the vendor, testing, conversations with them, just uh, looking at their their you know credentials and things like that, and it, it's a big deal for us because when we go to our clients, we want to make sure that we're uh, providing or offering something that is is legit, you know, because we're putting our name behind it too. Mm -hmm. And if there's a problem or issue, well, that's that's our reputation. So you know, it, for us, it's a big deal. And uh, you know, it could not only if we brought in the wrong vendor, it not only could impact our client negatively, uh, but it could cost us technologize a lot of time and money and reputation so absolutely I think that's a really good point and um, and and one of the advantages of using a company kind of like technologize so I have, a, I have another question because one of the things that I hear about is that I've seen in the art in the news a lot is these whether it's a hospital or even a small business uh, they all have, a lot of them have backups why aren't their backups doing them any good there's a, so there's a lot of different companies out there that do backup, but they don't necessarily, um, like they're not bad companies, but it just depends on how your information needs to back up, that be backed up in the first place. Um, so as an example, you were telling a story earlier about a friend of yours that had backup, um, but they, the ransomware actually got into their backup. So that's one issue. A lot of the times people are backing things up, but they're doing, um, they don't necessarily know what they're backing up. So you don't know if everything's being backed up or their file base backup or folders based backup. So it's not about the whole image of your computer. Um, at Datto specifically, we're an industry leader. So we've came, that's our bread and butter. That's where we started from. And that's where a lot of our, or majority of our growth has been. Um, we have 70% of our team is on, our, of our organization team is on development and growing the solution. So we're not necessarily based on backup, but the business continuity side. And I think that's where a lot of the differences is that some of these companies that they do have backup, but they kind of forget about that continuity piece. Mm. So backup, but the backup is in the cloud and it takes them a lot of time to get up and running, or it's in a safe and the person who has the key to the safe is on vacation, um, or any of those whatever scenarios you want to kind of put there. So how long is it going to take you to get up and running? Having a solution in place that A, you have your backup, but your business continuity. And then my second piece of that, and I'm sorry, I keep harping on that, is talking to a professional. Sometimes people, small to medium sized businesses, or even regular people, everyone's really busy. You're going to go to the store and find a solution and be like, oh, off the box, this is perfect, I'll just use this. But you don't realize that maybe that's not what you need actually in your business if something was to happen. Um, so having a professional that actually can look at your entire business and be like, what do you need specific to your business? Because it can work for you, might not work for someone else, and works for someone else, might not work for you. Um, those would be, that's, yeah. Well, I think a lot of it too, for us that I've, 
really been focusing on lately is having somebody else get a set of eyes on it, right? So like yeah. you're talking about it, uh, you know, getting a professional or somebody that can come in and evaluate and assess. Well, Technologize, we even do that. You know, mm -hmm. we bring in third parties. We have other people come in and assess and look at our stuff. I mean, I, I know sometimes I, us technology guys, IT guys can have some ego a little bit and like, oh no, we're good, we're set, you know, leave us, you know, we're protected. But the reality is we got to set that aside because the vulnerabilities and the risks are too high. Mm -hmm. And so we've, as an organization, have really been driving towards that, that, you know what, let's, let's, I don't, I, let's use a third party, bring them in, have them test everything, look at everything, turn things upside down. Because the last thing I want to do is have an ego here and think, oh, we're okay, or fall in that pitfall that, oh, we're, you know, we got it covered. And and then have some sort of issue or event, you know, yep. that either it impacts our clients or impacts us. And um, and that's just, nowadays, we just got to put that ego aside, spend the extra money to get third party come in to evaluate, look at it, and uh, do, you know, because there's always something they're going to find. I mean, it's it's an, any sort of assessment or audit, they always find something. And either it's, it's oh, yeah, I forgot about that, or, oh, we over made some assumptions, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I think it's security for training for yeah, it's security training for you guys as well, um, which is really important. Like that goes straight down. This conversation needs to continue to happen and it needs to happen from the bottom level to all the way to the top. Um, something new that's kind of been changing in the industry um, is that co-managed IT that we we're kind of chatting about. And it's, it's funny to think about. So a big business, right now we're talking, focusing a lot on small to medium-sized businesses, but we think about big businesses that already have internal IT or even small to medium-sized businesses where they have an internal IT guy because that's just the way that the business is always ran. But those internal IT guys are already so freaking busy as well that they don't have time to necessarily be double checking their own work, double checking their own security. So being able to have you guys step in and be like, okay, these are the, f not necessarily faults, but this is where you can get better. These are the products that you can do differently. Let's manage this together. Or at least you've had that second look in the business and been like, okay, this is working or this isn't, where's my risk? Well, I really like that because it's, it kind of goes back to the point I just made to where we're setting some egos aside because it's not a us and them. It's us. It's Well, it's not us. It's not them or, or us, right? It's, it's us working together to, to help each other be successful because it, it is, you know, the, the threat is too large. It's, it's too, too big for us to, uh, uh, you know, think, oh, you know, there's they're doing everything all wrong and or th we're doing mm -hmm. everything all wrong to have some sort of sort of squabble like that you know and and cuz we've been able to go into some uh, organizations and really partner with them and work with their full-time IT department and do the co-manage IT and it's been phenomenal i mean it really has because i mean they bring some real value and strength in their their in their knowledge about their organization and core there and then we can come in uh, from the outside as well and offer some that, that support or that outside information because we're involved in so many different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I see that more as well, more and more uh, common and people really interested in, in doing that. So uh, just a couple, another question here. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing what are the, and maybe we touched on these already, but what would be the top three myths, that, the pitfalls that people fall into? Um, I'm going to I feel like I have more than three. <laughs> uh, one of them is definitely going to be that I'm already protected. What I'm doing is enough. I guess that all kind of ties in or my antivirus is good enough. Um, I know those are kind of different, but it all ties into what I'm doing is good enough. Um, one big part of that is education. Um, a lot of the times people, the conversation is changing, but people don't realize how quickly this bad business is moving and how quickly things are changing. So they think whatever they had in place five years ago was good enough, but it's not anymore. And so that's a big thing. Um, I feel like this is the answer to everything. It's never going to happen to me. No one ever thinks it's going to happen to me, except for maybe winning the lotto, but that's another story. Um, that's the reason why the lotto is so good. Uh, but it's never going to happen to me is a big thing. Um, and that is just a matter of Sadly, time and education, because you were saying earlier today that you're seeing weekly 
like that's crazy it's not like we're in a massive industry we're not like we're not talking with big big companies that are worth a lot of money like banks and whatever we're talking about small and medium-sized businesses that are weekly getting hit um I know that I'm in this industry, so I'm heavily inundated with all of the stories and this coming out all the time. But to me, it's even crazier when I'm at home in my own social life where I have friends who are in all different industries where I'm seeing them get hit. And they're not even small to medium-sized businesses necessarily. Um, I've got, but I do, I have friends who are, who own their own travel agent companies and I I have to sit and say to them, be like, this is important, you need to, oh, no, no, I'm fine. It's not gonna happen to me. It's never gonna happen to me. Like, But what's the amount of work and effort you put into those 80 hours that you want to work for yourself and send to somebody else? What's that worth to you if it could be one click to lose it all? Um, So that's it's not going to happen to me is a big one um, and just a matter of conversation overcoming it. Um, And then I would definitely say the what I already have in place is good enough. Um, And all of that is. I think a really important part is to talk to a professional. You need to talk to a professional to take a look at the way your offices are actually running, your computers, your systems, even right down to the, are you an office that needs to have a security in place um, in the office? Are people having their passwords under their computer? Do you have a business continuity thing in place? Um, Someone who looks outside, as we've said so many times today, but looks outside at your office and says, are you secure? We hear the, 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 in the news everything about all the hospitals or the school districts or the municipalities that are ge- getting hit. But what you don't hear in the news are all those small businesses. And, and as a small business owner, you know, it's, you, you don't want to announce that. You don't want to, you're not going to send in your own press release. Hey, we got ransomware this week. So people don't talk about it. It's one of those things that, you know, it kind of gets around a little bit, mm-hmm. but unless you're in the industry, because you, like you said, you hear the stories, I hear stories all the time, but that's because, you know, hey, somebody told me, hey, a friend of mine, you know, they got this, that, or the yep. other, this, you know, but it's, it's those things you just don't hear about in the news. The cost of reputation is huge, and that's another reason why we don't hear it as much until it hits the news. For a small to medium-sized business to lose so much if they're paying the ransom or if they like they lose information or there's risk involved the cost of the reputation to the business means enough to them that they won't necessarily report it to the FBI cuz they don't well, want that most, reputation most, risk most people don't exactly. you, know, you know they don't report it and i know FBI has said that what 92% pay the ransom or 98% or something like that. Which it was is crazy. 90, it, was not, it was crazy. And then, um, you know, so the, uh, yeah, so, so people don't, don't talk about it. You know, they're probably embarrassed. You know, there is the reputation. They're trying to kind of circle the wagons a little bit and protecting their own because, you, because they, did, they do work so hard for, for, their, for their business. And Okay, Desiree, just kind of as a final thought here, we talk doom and gloom all the time, ransomware and cybersecurity, and that's ah, it's crazy, scary, stressful. Tell me some good stories. I want to hear some good news. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to bring it back to just a personal story that I just think is entertaining to me anyways. So at my last company, we actually had Datto in place, and I'm the type of person, I'm well, very, very busy, as everybody is, um, I accidentally don't listen to people when they tell me, so when you reset your computer, because you have to update things and it tells you not to touch it. So I was working one day and I had an update that I was supposed to do forever ago. And you just don't do it because you're really, really busy. And then finally you have to do it. So press update computer and an hour later it's still updating. So I'm getting more and more frustrated by the second because I have way too much I have to do today. So I just like turned it off and turned it on again, which crashed my entire computer. <laughs> But the one thing my tech when he came in and he said to me and he was like you're lucky we have Datto because <laughs> you can here's a computer you can work off of and I have to redo your entire computer because you crashed the entire thing I was like oh that's just amusing to me because well, now I work for Datto which is awesome 
Um, and then there's two good stories that just came up um, about a week ago in the industry um, on my one of my social media forums. I'm not sure if it was LinkedIn or Facebook. One of our partners posted um, this video of his basement where all his servers are kept. Um, and it's like raining in his basement, just like a complete flood. And in the post, he posts, he's like, luckily I have Datto because it was a weekend too. He's like, because all of my servers are running from the cloud. I don't have to deal with this right now. This is going to be a mess to clean up on Monday, but at least I can be, um, everything's fine and up and running until then. So I thought that was really cool, especially the tag um, for Datto specifically, which is awesome. And then a story that I was just told um, that I thought was cool, there was a small fire department. So one of those kind of volunteer fire departments where um, um, everything, it's not like they have a lot of money. Um, that their service crashed and they were running data devices. So they had were able to work out of the cloud um, while they fundraised for new servers. So that was a few months that they actually worked out of the cloud while they fundraised um, to buy new servers then bought new servers. So their systems didn't go down. They were able to continue doing their services and keep up and running um, until they were able to replace that. So those are kind of my few fun stories. You know, the, the, the second one that you gave there about the, uh, the flood in the basement, I actually came across that too, and I, f I loved it. I mean, I just thought, because one, one, the video was incredible. You look at it, and I'm like, holy cow, that is a ton of water. And you can see the, the server equipment on the far side of the room, and it is just, I mean, it's not a drip. I mean, this is like a water like raining <laughs> and raining inside of the basement. I mean, it's like talking feet of water, and I'm like, holy cow, but... What was really cool about his post is just, he was like, yeah, this, you know, the sense I got out of it, yeah, this sucks, but he had the peace of mind that, you know what, we'll be okay. Yep. And and we've got it covered. It, you know, it's going to be a pain to deal with, but our data is there. It's in the cloud. We'll be able to operate and work and, you know, life moves forward. <laughs> I thought, wow, that's, that is really cool. And then what I really like about this, the second example too, is that, you know, I, I, you think of the difference. If, if they, they took, they, that fire department had the foresight and thought to, let me, let's just put some of these small steps in place ahead of time. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things that really doesn't take a whole lot. And you, you just, a little bit of just forethought ahead of time, implementing some things, and how big of a difference. I mean, you said it took them a couple months to get them, you know, the funds and stuff like that. I mean, the the the, the converse op, uh, op, you know if they didn't have any of that how awful that that would have mm -hmm. been so it's it's nice to see that the positive impact that ha making the good decisions up front ahead of time and taking the time to plan about it think about it implement and uh, how big of a difference that can make the peace of mind for mm -hmm. sure just the relaxed feel of those conversations compared to the opposite when they don't have it's heartwarming well it is i know from personal experience you know i've i've had to tell hey business owners your your data is gone and it is not coming back you know and, and a, i remember a practice that was 23 they had been in practice you know in practice for 23 years and it was all everything financial patient i'm like oh my gosh so to have to know the difference and have those positive experiences is is that's why I'm so passionate about it, mm -hmm. and, and because I know the the impact and the good things that can happen and the protection people can have. Yep, I agree. That's I, the way I feel about it. That this conversation is so important to me, and the reason I love this industry um, as much as I do is just because we are helping people. Um, it's a different way of helping people, of course, but the world is changing really quickly. Technology is moving so fast. Um, and then with the increase of IoT devices, the amount of technology that will be in everybody's home. So we've talked a lot of small to medium sized businesses, but everybody touches technology um, nowadays that I know of anyways. Uh, and so the fact that we are starting these conversations and having these conversations and hopefully changing making it a little bit harder for the bad guys um, and saving people. People work really, really hard for their money. So saving them that money is important to me. It's, it's to the heart. Yeah. One thing I like to say is, you know, there's, there's quality of life, right? That people, but our work and what we do in our society and, and technology impacts our quality of life. And it's that 
not having to deal with those negative components is is makes a huge difference. So I appreciate you coming today, Desiree. Thank you again so much for chatting with me, and hope we can do it again sometime in the yeah. future. And, and so we'll go ahead and wrap this up and sign off. Thank you. Thanks so much.